Hey hey, g'day boys and girls, healers and blokes. My name is Jacob and lately I have been playing a very unhealthy amount of Power World. The first day this game was out, I unintentionally pulled an all-night of playing. It's been a total blast. I've been playing with two other friends and with each friend focusing on different tasks. I've been shiny hunting and I've spent about half of my 68 hours total playtime just shiny hunting. I've caught many so far, but not really the powers I'm after, which has been unfortunate. But as for my other mates, well, one of them's been our explorer, which by now I've done about more exploring than he has, as he's been very busy, and the other our base builder. Between the three of us, we've got a really nice system going, supporting each other with different tasks, researching into different technologies. Hopefully we get a fourth one soon, after a few troubles has worked out. Trust me, I'll be playing plenty of Power World. Yeah, so... You can tell I find this game very fun. People are calling it Pokemon with guns, which uh, I don't really know about that. I think by now most people know the comparisons to Pokemon are very small. Power World actually plays a lot more like Ark Survival Evolved, which I was very surprised about when I started playing this game and noticed the similarities with the weapon durability and crafting tree system. But I think it's better than Ark Survival Evolved in many ways. Like sure it doesn't have the dinosaurs, but well, the powers are cute and they don't permanently die. When I played Ark Survival Evolved, which I haven't played a great load of, I didn't like how my dinosaurs permanently died and how dangerous the environment was to explore. Which, yeah, I know that's kind of a feature for Ark, but it discouraged me from openly exploring, so I played the base slave who gathered the resources, and, and yeah, I, I wouldn't take my dinosaurs anywhere unless absolutely necessary, like if the tribe needed me. But with Power World, I find it much nicer. It's an easier arc, and I don't know, I, I find that a lot of fun. Especially with my pals not permanently dying. It's such a huge step up over arc for me. And Power World's still in early access too, so I'm keen to see the updates it gets. Like, I already noticed a lot of glitches, and they're getting fixed soon. The most annoying one for me that I keep encountering is I clip through walls whenever I dismount. It's small bugs like that, but they're getting fixed, and all in all, Power World developers are an indie studio, and this game isn't finished yet, so these things are to be expected. Unlike Pokemon, for that matter. Which are complete games. Yeah, no Game Freak, you're not fooling me, and you can call them complete games, but these are not. Pokemon Sword and Shield, even Legends Arceus I'd say, are definitely Scarlet and Violet, were released unfinished. These are terrible, ugly, buggy messes of games. They are crap. They are bloody misleading. Step up your game. You dexited Generation 8, told players you did this because you needed to remodel the Pokemon and update animations, but you bloody lied. These were the exact same models from the 3DS games. People died mind these, and we know. And the new animations? No, there's just no. Students have better animations than your industry professionals at Game Freak. You and your company are a joke. Game Freak are notoriously bad at game compression. I heard that there was already free space on the Sword and Shield Switch cartridge for these missing Pokemon, but if they had better competence, they would have been able to compress the files to include these Pokemon with the file size they ship with. The following is a minor nitpick from me, but how do the Pokemon games not have voice acting at this point? They had it in the trailers for Scarlet and Violet, but not in the full game. You had paid voice actors for what? A trailer? Are you kidding me? Technically, Roxy had voice acting singing in her gym during Black and White 2. But you know what's more surprising? The Gacha game. The shitty mobile Gacha gambling game of Pokemon. Every NPC, every trainer, everyone has a voice, and they can talk in English. And I assume Japanese. Why can't Game Freak take these actors and put them into the mainline Pokemon games? People are spending 80 Australian dollars. Full price! No, they are spending more. They are spending double that because they are buying both versions like a herd of good little Mary who play whatever shit Game Freak puts out, supporting them for putting in little to no effort, making Game Freak complacent to continue releasing garbage, buggy game after bloody game. It's just mind-boggling people will buy and support these terrible games made by terrible developers, while these same people, these Pokemon fans, who play literal rubbish, Spend money on rubbish, will attack a game like Power World and send this indie studio death threats for making a far better game in its incomplete state that's half the price of a Pokemon game that has everything in this one single version. It's just... I'm stunned. They are jealously attacking better games to defend themselves for playing rubbish. They should raise their standards and put this anger towards Game Freak. 
minus the death threats obviously, for making crap nearly the entire Nintendo Switch generation. And no, these games aren't crap because they are on the Switch. Shut the bloody hell up if you think that. Have you not seen Monster Hunter Rise? If you're familiar with my channel, like one of my 8 subscribers, then you have seen Monster Hunter Rise. That game runs incredible on the Nintendo Switch. It is magic what Capcom did with that. And it's not like that's the only game. There are plenty. Have you seen the Xenoblade games? An entire trilogy of Xenoblade games, plus expansions. Massive open area RPGs with over hundreds of hours of playtime, with incredible voice acting, incredible character models, incredible combat, incredible music, bloody incredible world design. And Pokemon doesn't have this? Pokemon is one of the highest grossing game franchises in the world. What the Pokemon company needs to do is either crack down on Game Freak, sack him, do whatever, I don't care, or take the I Pokemon IP away from them and give it to people like Monolith Soft, the Xenoblade developers, and the developers of, o of other Switch games like Zelda Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Splatoon, and Animal Crossing. They have been involved in all of these games and these are some of the best on the system. They need to get involved and save Pokemon. These games are dying, essentially in the eyes of the general public. Now Power World's come along and people are saying it's better despite hardly having anything in common with Pokemon at all, and it's because there hasn't been any good Pokemon games in a long, long bloody time. If this isn't the wake-up call to the Pokemon company, then I don't know what is. But no. No it isn't. You know what the Pokemon company is doing? They are investigating Power World, like likely trying to find anything that they can to take it down so it doesn't make Pokemon look any worse. And the Pokemon company aren't the only ones attacking Power World. I've seen a Naughty Dog dev is crying that Power World is illegitimately made, with no proof other than his gut dev intuition, likely since it's massively outselling and taking all the attention away from the wholly unnecessary Last of Us 2 remake released on the exact same day. Classic Sony developer move. And then there's the massive amount of Pokemon fans on Twitter whining about the power designs like, sure, I'll admit some aren't very inspired, but are you seriously going to say the Pokemon designs are? Pokemon has an ice cream cone, literally an ice cream cone, a candle, a chandelier, literally a bag of rubbish that has a T in front of it for its name. And yeah, I'm talking about Generation 5. I like Generation 5 and I've played that a lot, so that's the first thing that came in my head, okay? I'm not calling them bad either, rather I'm pointing out these designs prove Pokemon designs aren't all original. In the newest generation, there's just an apple called Applin, and even worse, all the way back in your precious Generation 1, they have made a snake and caught it snake backwards. Same for the evolution. Like, come on, you really going to dump all over Power World? Pokemon is just as uninspired at times. And I'm not saying there's no good designs either, alright? I really like Flygon, it's my favourite Pokemon, and in the said newest generation, these games I haven't and won't play ever, there's Pikiton, which looks awesome, I love it, and uh, I may be a bit biased because it has a hammer, but anyway. And Power World has plenty of cool designs too, like I love Incinerum, that thing looks interesting. Combat reminds me of a Gligar crossed with a Bishiton and a Magnamolo. I saw that thing and I said, ban that thing's badass. And I love how adorable Flame Bell is. Power World has good designs, inspired or not. People are throwing whatever lies they can to discredit this game, like saying the 3D models are one-to-one, -one, which the guy who made the viral tweet admitted he edited it to look like that. He lied! Or people are saying that they used AI, which isn't true, there's no direct proof, and if evidence surfaces to prove they did, I still wouldn't care because the game is fun whilst Pokemon isn't. Perhaps Game Freak should use AI, they might finally put out a decent game. So that's likely my first hot take out of many that's going to be on this channel. And if you're mad, please support Jezzy Chi, a real human woman I paid money to draw the avatar you see on the screen. But go support real artists. I have, and I still will. But I simply don't care how something is made, as long as it's enjoyable. And you're lying if you say you do. So, back to the topic at hand. Power World's only similarity to Pokemon are the powers, which are literally a parody of Pokemon. The gameplay and mechanics are nothing like Pokemon. I already said they feel significantly more like Ark Survival Evolved, and the devs at Wildcard aren't complaining about the game. I've played and enjoyed other creature taming games, like Monster Hunter Stories. I mean, obviously I'd play that, but there are others like Nexamon and Temtem, 
I haven't played Cassette Beast yet since I've been really busy working through the massive JRPG series that is Trails since the middle of last year. Yeah, that's right IGN, bugger off trying to say Persona has the longest story in gaming. And while on that topic, Shin Megami Tensei games have more in common with Pokemon than Bloody Cow World does, said Nexamon is extremely identical with its gameplay. It plays just like a Pokemon game, and nobody cared! So if you're still listening, you likely think I hate Pokemon games, that I'm just a hater. Well I'm not. I love Pokemon and the reason I'm saying all of this, and the reason I have such strong negative opinions, is because I love Pokemon as a series and I want it to do much better than it is now. If I hated something, I just won't talk about it, okay? I don't like Kingdom Hearts or VTubers, among other things that much, I just don't talk about them. I'm like, yeah okay, that's the thing I don't like, why would I care about something I don't like? Well I don't. That's why games like Monster Hunter World, Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis, and Pokemon Generations 8 and 9, the reason I have such strong opinions about these games is that I love the series they are from, but I hate what these games are doing to it. That's why I care so much. So to finish driving this point home, I started Pokemon with Generation 3, and I finished with the Generation 3 remakes. Generation 3 is not my favourite Pokemon games, that goes to Pokemon Generation 5's Black and White, and especially Black and White 2. That sequel takes everything that makes the first games great and makes them 10 times better. Pokemon Black and White had so much going for it, like once you beat the main campaign you still had half the map to explore in the post game. There were bits that made this game feel like a live service back before those were even a popular thing. It felt like this game was constantly changing, there was rotating seasons each month that changed the maps and the Pokemon spawns. If you were playing during winter that drastically changed the game. Depending on what day it was, you had rotating sports teams to battle. There was the Castilia Cone or the Bikey Gang you meet on the bridge late one night, and most surprisingly, these games had a love interest, you can go on dates with them and romance them. There was even a shopping center management simulator, where every day you had new customers and employees you could hire. And this isn't even a third or even a quarter of the content in these games. This is to say, the black and white games are in my opinion where the Pokemon series peaked. And then when X and Y released, they just felt empty in comparison. It felt like such a massive step back. I didn't hate the games, but I wanted a little bit of what Black and White had. I finished the game the day it came out. I started it that morning and I finished it that night. And once you've beat the game, you've been everywhere there is but one town and there's nothing else really to do other than one hour post game story. Understandably, the jump from 2D to 3D wouldn't have been easy, so I let it slide. However, when I saw the Generation 7 games and seen gym leaders were being removed, I was like, geez, that's kind of bad, so I didn't buy them, which I later regretted. They didn't sound as bad as I first thought, and the Ultra sequels had some really cool alternate dimensionality, but I was playing other games at the time, so yeah. For Generation 8, Sword and Shield was something I was really eager to play. For a next generation game on the Switch, I thought it would be incredible. Yeah, nah. You see, I had finished the National Pokedex by Y2, and I transferred them all to Y, and then finished it again. Generation 8, I was planning to transfer them all, and finish what I was missing, but I couldn't. Dex had happened, and that really killed it for me. If I can't catch them all, I wouldn't be catching any, and that's why I didn't buy the game. And then the game finally released to its previous said criticism. Plain flies about reused models and animations, bad pop-in in the open areas that just didn't look right, it was all around disappointing. And this was worse still in Generation 9 where we're at now. Legends Arceus I heard friends say is good, but I disagree. What I've seen in the trailer, it just looks bad. It seems like Pokemon and Game Freak copied from Monster Hunter stories too, and not in making the game look pretty. Hmm, hey Capcom, maybe you should start an investigation. I don't really have anything to say about the Generation 4 remakes. They are okay. I even bought Pearl, but this is just Generation 4 again, but in 3D. Really, there's nothing special about them. It's disappointing since Gen 1 was remade like Generation 3 and 6, Gen 2 was remade like Generation 4, and Generation 3 was remade like Generation 6. 4 is just 4. We probably dodged a bullet by not making it like Generation 8, in all honesty. But if they weren't going to make it play drastically different, then why didn't the Pokemon company make them look like Octopath Traveler? 
with that gorgeous HD 2D art style. People have long wanted another sprite-based Pokemon game, and that was your chance! It would have been incredible! I am honestly so worried about the Pokemon Black and White remakes. They are inevitable, and most likely I'm going to be disappointed with them. Either we just get Generation 5 again, but it's 3D, which honestly, I like Generation 5 enough that I'll play that and likely enjoy it, as long as it's not bug-ridden. Or we get them remade like Scarlet and Violet, and nobody is going to like that. Seriously, please don't do that. It'll just suck. A few months ago, Square Enix and Tri-Ace released Star Ocean Second Story Off, and it uses a HD 2D.5 art style, and it's gorgeous. And this is what Black and White were like. Please, Game Freak, look at this game as inspiration for these remakes. Basically, I just want to say that I want a good Pokemon game again. A game that feels like it's worth the full price AAA game that they are charging us. And I think Power World, more than any of these other games, more than Nexamon, more than Temtem, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Cassette Beast, there's plenty of other creature taming games as well that have been released. I think Power World, even though it's not too similar to Pokemon like the others are, I think this is finally what we needed to get Game Freak and the Pokemon Company to get their shit together. They have become complacent and lazy, they just release worse and worse games, and the worst part is, people keep buying them. Like, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sold millions, millions, 23 bloody million, significantly more than Xenoblade Chronicles 3 did, and that is a far better game, far more complete game, far less bug-riddled game. In fact, the game only had one major bug at launch, and its only effect was the small food buffs you get, like the plus 5% to attack, they didn't work properly. But you could play the game start to finish without any major issues. Like, maybe some people did have a few, but I didn't. And Xenoblade Chronicles 3, it was a game that was rushed out two months earlier than it was planned, and it was still a great game. I played that game for 230 hours and I hadn't felt robbed at all. It was money well spent and I enjoyed my entire experience. And then you got Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You know what, I'm not even going to bother saying anymore. The people in charge of Pokemon need to learn from Power World success, just like they need to learn from other developers. Game Freak needs to take a loss. They need to stop. They need to fail. They need a game to flop. They need to hurt in profit and reputation enough to realize people should not have to keep putting up with shit year after year. A similar thing happened before with Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed. Unity was bad and it flopped hard. Everyone criticized it, and you know what Ubisoft did? They stopped and they went back to the drawing board and made Assassin's Creed Origins. Everyone loved that game, then they made Odyssey, and people kind of liked it, then they made Ragnarok, so... Well, anyway, I always like to use this as an example for when something is failing. You need to look at a way to fix that, and that's why I go to the Ubisoft example. I could have done the same thing with Final Fantasy XIV as well, but anyway. So even if Ubisoft didn't keep up the trend of making good games people like, they did stop and they listened. That's what I 100% believe is what Pokemon needs. Okay, okay. While editing this, I discovered there's a Nexmon 3 currently in development. I loved the last game, Nexmon Extinction. I even caught all 400-something Nexmon. I spent hours running in and out of bushes just to find the rare ones with extremely slim chance of spawning, just so I can get the PSN Platinum. I loved it, and I'm really keen. I mean, wow, look at this teaser in the screenshots. Like, this is a work in progress from, again, an indie studio, and they already look better than Game Freak, a AAA development studio with millions and millions and millions of dollars. Like, this is just... I I'm, not, I'm not continuing. Let's get on with the outro. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Pokemon and Power World. It's more of a rant <laughs> than my normal videos. Like I said, Pokemon is a series I really like, and I really want to see it do better, which is why I complain. I've talked about these exact things a lot to my mates in real life over the years, and since I've got a YouTube channel now, I thought, hey, how about I put them in a video, no idea if it's good or not, and toss it out into the ether to see what happens. Maybe people will hear it and agree, or maybe they won't. Perhaps they'll have some change of opinion, whatever. So, please like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, I'm open to dialogue in the comments, and please subscribe for more. Any engagement helps. I'm still working on my big Monster Hunter video. I'm planning to have it out in February, but expect a video on the full release of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink first. Alright, that's all. Have a good one, people. Cheers.